Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so this is the third episode of the Web Apps in R series. So today we're going to build a Play Golf web application. So probably you're wondering what is a Play Golf application? So the Play Golf web application that we're going to build today is going to be based on the weather data set provided by the Wika data mining software. So let's have a look here. So the data set is a relatively small data set where it has a total of five variables. So four variables are the outlook, temperature, humidity, and the wind. And the class label would be to play or not play golf, which is a function of the weather and the condition, right? Like whether it is sunny, whether the temperature is high, uh, whether the humidity is high or low or medium, and whether there is wind or not, true or false. And then the final decision is to either play or not play golf. Okay, so before we dive into the code, let's have a look at how does the web application looks like. Okay, so the web app looks like this. It's a very simple application. So the name of the web app is Play Golf. And so here there is the input parameters comprising of the four variables that I have mentioned. The first one is the outlook. And so the user can select one of three outlook, whether it is sunny, whether there is overcast of cloud, and also whether there is rain or not. And the second variable is the temperature. And so this is a slider input. So the user can slide the input value. And then the humidity is also a slider input. And then windy is either a yes or a no, which is a drop down menu. And then when you're ready to make a prediction, you just click on the submit button okay and here you see a prediction is being made and the prediction says yes and then we also see the underlying probability in that the no has a 27 percent probability and the yes has a 73 percent probability and so you could play around with this right if for example if it is sunny and the humidity is very high and the temperature is very high and there is wind should you play golf? No, right? I mean, really, if, if the temperature is high, it's very humid and it's very windy and it's sunny, right? Probably not, right? Okay. What if it's what if the humidity is low, temperature is quite cool and it's sunny and it's not so windy? Would you play golf? Right? Yes. Right? So there's a 87 probability for yes and a 13% probability for no. Okay, so this is the web app we're gonna build today. So let's go ahead and stop the web app for a moment okay so what you want to do now is go to the data professor github and then you want to click on the code directory and followed by clicking on the shiny directory and finally clicking on the 003 play golf directory and then click on the app.r file Okay, so what you want to do is right click on the raw link and then save the file. So I'm going to save it into the weather folder. Save it. Okay, it's right here. Click on it. Make sure that the app works. Okay, it works. Prediction has been made. Okay, cool. So let's just clear up this by pressing on the control and L button. Okay, so let's have a look under the hood. What does the app.r file looks like? So the first couple of lines will just import the libraries used by this app.r file. So this comprises of the shiny package, shiny themes package, the data.table library, the r curl library, and the random forest library. Okay, so next line of code would be to create a data object called weather by reading the CSV, which is downloaded from the data professor GitHub in the data folder. And the file is called weather.wika.csv. Okay, and let's have a look at the data set what does it look like i click on the line weather and then i hit on the control and enter button and then let's type in weather okay so this is what we see let's go with head and then weather okay and so we see that there are five columns outlook temperature humidity windy and play right and let's have a look at the data type of the data set 
we see that the outlook has three factor levels play has two factor levels so these are categorical label no yes and the outlook is overcast rainy and sunny windy is a true and false humidity and temperature are integers and so a random forest model will be created by using the four variables comprising of outlook temperature humidity windy as the input variable and the play variable here will be used as the output variable or the variable that we want to predict okay and then the the data equals to weather which is the weather data object here and we're going to use number of tree to be 500 and because there are four input variables we're just going to use m try of four okay so let's try building a model and the model has been built and let's apply the model for prediction shall we i mean just to test that the code is working properly so let's try applying the model on the input file that i have previously mentioned about and so we're going to run this line and putting the data into the variable called test okay and then we're going to assign the factor because if we don't do it then it'll provide an error so before we run this line of code let's just try to make a prediction model and we should be able to see a error coming up okay so we got this error error in predict random forest type of predictor in new data do not match so what we notice is that if we type in the str and then we type in weather and then we notice that the outlook has factors with three level but if we type in str and then the test variable notice that the outlook has a factor of only one level and this is because the input data has only one line of data which is essentially one row of data and, and so the outlook is only sunny so the prediction being made has only one row and but in reality it should have three levels of the factor so we're gonna define that by telling the code that there are three possible factors there are overcast rainy and sunny Okay, so let's run that line of code and then run the prediction again okay and then it works and then print output and here you go we got the prediction which is exactly what is going to be displayed on the web application let me show you right we make the prediction and it's shown here so this table you see here is shown right here okay so the model works and let's go to the other lines of code so the next one would be the user interface right as i have mentioned in previous video the user interface represents the first component of the shiny web app and this is followed by the second component which is the server and then this is followed by the third component which is the fusion of the user interface and the server component using the shiny app function okay so let's talk about the ui so this ui object makes use of the fluid page function and we're gonna use the theme equals to the shiny theme united and so the united theme will give the buttons a red color so if we change it to cerulean then we're going to have the cerulean color theme which is a bit blue okay so please refer to the first video of the web apps in r in order to see the selection of web templates that you can choose from Okay, so let's run the app again. And I'm going to put the app just about right, right here. So the header panel is Play Golf. And so this is right here, Play Golf. So if you want to change the name, feel free to do so. And then the next one is the sidebar panel. So the sidebar panel will accept the input parameters. It's located to the left. And there will be a total of four input. And so the first one is select input, which is a drop down menu. And if you click on it, you get three selection, sunny, overcast, rainy. And when you hover on the drop down menu on sunny, it will see secretly under the hood select the sunny object and if you select on the overcast also it will under the hood be equivalent to the overcast object and if you select on the rainy it will be equivalent to the rainy object and the default is to select rainy right here we'll select rainy as the default what if you change it to sunny and let's change the value to be a high value let's say like 85 and humidity to be 95 and it's windy that's true 
reload the app again, right? So high temperature, high humidity, windy, sunny, don't play golf. Okay, so here you can change the default value to your liking. Okay, so we have mentioned about the three data objects for here, sunny, overcast, and rainy. So keep that in mind. We're going to make use of that in the server function. And note that when we will refer to it later on in the server function, it will be referred to as input dollar sign outlook, input dollar sign temperature, input dollar sign humidity, and input dollar sign windy. Here, why don't we just scroll down and have a look here. Input dollar sign outlook, input dollar sign temperature, input dollar sign humidity, input dollar sign windy. Okay, and then let's move back up. Notice the spelling here using the small letter, not the capital one. So the capital one here are the label. So it's exactly what we're going to see in the web application. Outlook with the colon is right here on the label. Okay, actually, you don't have to type in label if you don't want to. We could just, you know, delete it and it it will give the same result. It's just implied. Okay, but if you want to add the label argument, you could feel free to do so. Right, but if you do it for one, then we we'll might as well do it for all. So that would actually make the code looks a bit more easier to read, right? So we see here that, okay, this is the object name Outlook and the label is Outlook with a capital O. Reload the app, here you go. Right, it works as usual. So here, this outlook here is an outlook object. And this temperature here is the temperature object. And this action button here is the submit button. So this submit button is added in order to overcome the reactive function. So we just add the familiar submit button so that users can initiate the prediction process when they feel ready to do so instead of having the web app being reactive and making the prediction spontaneously upon sliding up and down of the input values. Right? Because when it's reactive, if you move it by one notch and then you let go of the mouse, it'll make a prediction. But for this one with the submit button, no prediction will be made until you actually click on the submit button. So actually this might be a good thing on the server side because the server will work a bit less if the prediction being made is made only once versus if it is in the reactive mode, if you slide the input value and you, you just change your mind later on, then prediction will be made at each point of the changing of the input value of the slider here or even the drop down menu, right? But we do it once. With the use of the submit button. Okay, and that's it for this left sidebar panel. And then the main panel here will display the result from the output generated by the server function. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So why don't we note that the output being generated by the server component will be called contents and table data. Okay. Okay. So let's hop on to the server function, which is the second component. So in this data set input variable, it will comprise of the first component is it will create a data frame, which will accept four input values from the web application comprising of the outlook, temperature, humidity, windy, which is right here, outlook, temperature, humidity, windy, and then it will combine it with the play variable, which is the fifth column of the original data set. And then it will transpose the data set. It will rotate it. It will transpose it and then write a input.csv file. It will read the input.csv file back in into the test variable. And then it will apply the factor function in order to tell that the outlook has three levels. And finally, a prediction will be made using the model generated earlier by means of the random forest and apply the prediction model to predict the input values from the user. And once the prediction is made, it will be sent from here into the output dollar sign table data as the function data set input right here. And then it's going to render the table as we will see in the web application. 
So the table that is being rendered will be right here, which comprises of three columns, the prediction, the no, and the yes probability. Okay, and this status output text box is just essentially this box right here. So if we load the app for the first time, it will just say server is ready for calculation. And if we click on the submit button, the text will change to calculation complete, and then it will be followed by the prediction results table. Okay, so note that there are two output being generated right here output dollar sign contents output dollar sign table data and so these two output will be sent to the UI component right here table data and contents right table data will be displayed as a table using the table output function and the status of the prediction whether it is ready for prediction or prediction has been made would be displayed by the verbatim text output function okay and this is just the label of the status output text box shown right here that we're going to have the h3 font size okay, i mean if you want to change it to h2 make it a bit bigger then you, you will notice that the font will become bigger right so I'm just going to make it back to H3. Okay. So that's all, right? And then the, the last component, shiny app function, will just fuse the UI and the server together. Okay, and you have all of this in 121 lines of code. And so nothing fancy here, just a simple web application that you can create using the shiny language. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.